Right. Hey, folks. So I wanted to speak a bit about consistency today and ways that you can manage your training, your cardio, and your diet to remain consistent in the long term. Before we get onto that, like the video, subscribe, all those good things. And if you're interested in coaching, there's a link in the description. Now, clearly, consistency is huge, right? The majority of the time, if you're able to get to the gym, do your training, do your cardio, eat the right foods for a long period of time, like years and years, you're going to get places. The guys who tend to stay still are the ones who lack this consistency in one of those areas. So as a result, they just fall off the bandwagon. I've known guys who have just not gone to the gym for three, four, five months at a time because they don't know how to auto-regulate their efforts. So when life throws them a curveball, they just completely give up. They don't know how to handle like shades of gray. And if you are one of those guys who has this all or nothing mindset, well, what are you telling yourself when it comes to nothing? Like, what are you telling yourself? Let's say you decide to skip the gym because you don't know how to auto-regulate. What is that signaling to you? Well, I think it's signaling it's going to be easier to say no next time. If you say no to the gym on Monday, it's going to be easier to say no on Tuesday. It's going to be easier to say no on Wednesday. If you skip your cardio altogether, it's going to be easier to skip it next time. If you decide to binge on the weekend because you've set up a horrendous diet model, which you can't possibly sustain, so it's subtly signaling to you that this is fine, this is normal, when it's not. So if you don't allow yourself a bit of auto-regulation, if it's an all or nothing thing, at some point, it's going to be nothing. What are you telling yourself if you set up your training, your diet and your cardio to have this all or nothing mindset? You're telling yourself every now and again, we're going to get nothing. And you're normalizing that. So inconsistency is the bane of every lifter, whether that comes with diet or training or cardio. And this all or nothing attitude is one of the root causes of that. So this video is about correcting that because you got to remember every time you completely give up on your training, your diet or your cardio, it's signaling to your brain, okay, we, we've got a get out clause. And that's the only get out clause we've got. We can't just moderate ourselves. No, we've got to go all or nothing because my favorite YouTuber goes, yeah, i got to train harder. Your favorite YouTuber is a clown. He's not an athlete. So you have to be able to auto-regulate yourself into sessions where you're not feeling as good because there are going to be times when this applies. It's not every time. As I say, most of the time you go in, you should go in anyway, regardless of if you're tired or not, and you'll probably do okay. But there are going to be genuine times if you're pushing yourself hard where you will need to auto-regulate and pull back a little bit. There's no point saying all or nothing at that point. I think in general, the first point of call is you should probably just try and stick to the plan, of course. Most of the time, if you're feeling a bit tired, if you're feeling a bit worn down, just go to the gym. You'll, odds are, once you get warmed up, you'll be fine. But this video is not about that. This video is about those one or two times out of 10 where you don't feel very good and you really don't want to go to the gym or you really don't want to stick to your diet or do your cardio. If you have this sort of all or nothing mentality, what you're going to do is you're going to end up doing nothing. And then that compounds. And before you know it, you've spent weeks away from your diet, just eating whatever you want, binging, whatever, weeks away from the gym, weeks away from your cardio, because you don't know how to do the shades of gray. You don't know how to auto-regulate your efforts. And I think part of the problem comes down to, I think it's a mentality thing. I think the mentality is, for a lot of people, it's all or nothing. Because that is reinforced by things they see on YouTube or people they speak to, like coaches, influencers, who just tell them to go hard all the time. Yeah, you gotta be hard, tough, beat your chest. I can guarantee you those guys are the ones with the most problems when it comes to consistency. The guys who rattle on and on about hard work, almost always those are the guys who spend months and months away from the gym. In fact, feel free to ask them. Ask the next big train harder influencer how many months he spent away from the gym over the last three years. I guarantee you it's multiple months. I think that's very much an amateur mindset. The amateur mindset is you must go hard all the time no room for error, feel tired, go. Hungry, diet. There is no room for shades of gray. There is no room for autoregulation. It's those types of people who generally don't like RPE, RIR approaches because they think everything should be at maximum intensity all the time, which sounds great. Sounds great in theory. But then, but then you have to ask yourself, why 
are these types of people consistently the ones who fall off the bandwagon so much? Whereas it's the more chill guys, the more relaxed guys, who even when they're feeling down, even when they're feeling low, they get in to do the bare minimum. That's the athlete's mindset. So there's a difference here. It's an amateur mindset, there's an athlete mindset. When I was powerlifting, for example, there were days during the plan where I just didn't feel like I was able to perform. I still went to the gym. I might have picked slightly lower numbers. I might not have gone as hard, but I was there. On those days where I was close to just saying, no, I'm done with this, I turned up, I was there. And that was the lesson which was instilled to me by my, some of my early coaches was at least just go in, give it a try, aim a bit lower and see how it goes. So it gave me the option of going in and it gave me a bit of mental and physical relief on those days where if I didn't have that, I probably wouldn't have gone in the first place. And again, there are going to be people out there who will say all the right things and will tell you, look, you should just go anyway, you should give it all. Again, it works well in theory, but I guarantee you, those are the guys who are spending time and months away from the gym, um, weekends binging on food because they just don't know what moderation is. It's either all or nothing. So this video is about the athlete's mindset, a professional mindset towards staying on your path because it doesn't have to be all or nothing. It would be great if we were just robots, but we're not. We're human beings, we have ups and downs. There are genuine times where we might need to pull back a little bit. That is what auto-regulation is. So just gonna talk you through a few things that I do personally. So first one, which is very relevant, it's happened to me this week. So I'm currently doing a bit of a fat loss phase, right? Now, in general, I hit my cardio every day, or six days a week, doing about half an hour of cardio. Now, I do a quick refeed on a Saturday night, right? Sunday morning, full of energy, good to go. My cardio sessions result in a much higher heart rate on a Sunday morning. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I can do cardio sessions which are right at the top of zone two. And I can do that with relative ease because I just feel good, I'm full of energy, I've got, my, I've got some more carbs in my system, right? I feel good. So for example, this Sunday, right after a refeed night on Saturday, I hit about 150 heart rate on my cardio for half an hour, which for me is a good effort. It's great. Now, by the end of the week, as I'm getting more and more tired, as I'm getting more and more depleted, as I'm looking forward to a refeed on the weekend, my heart rate, it's nowhere near as high for those 30 minutes because I just feel more fatigued. I just feel a lot more tired. So I allow myself to get by with a slightly lower heart rate. Because if you think about it, duration for cardio is super important. If you're trying to do zone two cardio, duration is super important. So I don't want to I don't want to reduce duration. I'm still going to go to the gym, all right? Still going to be there, still going to target half an hour, but I might just go a little bit easier, but at least I'm there, I'm getting the benefit because the important thing for cardio, particularly zone two work, is just to go in and do it for a long duration of time. So half an hour, okay, which is reasonable. Half an hour, six days a week, plenty of effort. Now, whether that's at the top of zone two, or whether it's at the bottom of zone two, I'm still getting the right benefit. Now that kind of mindset it sounds super simple but it's that type of mindset which will save you it's the athlete's mindset of go in do what you can on the day let's cover diet next diet is a very similar thing a lot of these all or nothing guys guarantee you they're just binging every weekend <laughs> it's not good it's just not healthy and, and a lot of these guys they don't actually have a diagnosis it's just their diet setup is so terrible they're so hungry by the weekend like, and they just keep repeating these cycles. They get addicted to the weight loss during the course of the week and then they binge up on the weekend, get all bloated. You can see it in their face. It's terrible. A lot of this is all very much self-imposed stuff. So you have to learn to be able to moderate. It may not be a genuine condition. You may just need to moderate yourself. So I'm not discounting everyone's condition. Of course, there are actual conditions out there which are related to psychology. But for a lot of these guys, their diet setups are horrendous. When I covered this um, recently, I think it was last year, people who were binging at night, every night. One guy I know who, who was asking me for diet advice was taking advice from somebody else who was telling him to save calories for the nighttime. All that ended up happening was he was having larger and larger meals at night and creating a lot of hunger throughout the day. And at nighttime, it was just insatiable. <laughs> what an insanely poor tactic. This is where you have to be able to know how to adapt things. But anyway, going back to my point, right? When it comes to diet, let's say you are at the point where you've been dieting for a while, you're thoroughly at your wits end and you need a bit of a break. I would rather you have a cheat meal, 
cheat night, whatever, a free meal, free night, whatever you want to call it. I'd rather you do that with the proviso that you're going to get back to regular scheduled eating the very next meal. So that's the thing. What you want to try and avoid is a situation where it's all or nothing and you have no options. You must stick to these calories. You must stick to the diet. Any other option outside of that is a failure because words and mentality really affect us. And if you think, okay, this is what my coach has said, any deviation from this is an absolute failure, you're much more likely to go, okay, screw it. Weekend's gone. And then before you know it, the week's gone as well. And the month's gone. And you're just stuck in the same loop you've been for your entire life. You have to be able to see shades of gray. And the, the, the easiest shade of gray for diet is if you are at your wit's end, do your best to get back to things the following meal. Allow yourself that freedom, allow yourself that option of going off plan. And I just want to address this. Flexibility in diet is not being able to fit everything in your macros. That's not flexibility. I've covered this before. I gave the analogy that I've had before is it's like saying you're free to roam around a prison yard. That's not free. You're still within the confines of prison. It's the same as saying to someone, you can eat whatever you like within your calorie limit. That's not flexibility. You're still adhering to the diet. So flexibility in terms of diet and auto-regulation is just going off your diet what, and eating whatever. But with the sensible adult thinking that you're going to get right back on your diet the very next meal. Now, when it comes to training, I would rather see you focus on intensity and reduce volume. On those, let's say you've been dieting hard for four, five, six, seven, eight weeks, whatever it is. You're at the point where your body is depleted and you're just constantly running on slightly less energy. And let's say you have a low energy day. Okay, it happens. Now, the best thing to do, rather than just struggle through the entire session, because if you carry on doing that, it's going to lead to a lack of effort it's going to dilute your efforts. Again, the amateur mindset, the athlete mindset is to make adjustments on the day. So when it comes to training, what I would rather you do is, unlike cardio, unlike cardio, with cardio, keep the duration, keep the volume, reduce the intensity. For training, it's the opposite. Keep the intensity high. So keep the weight on the bar high. But if you normally do, say, two sets of squats, do one set. If you normally do four sets of bench presses, do one or two sets, but keep the weight on the bar high. Even try and improve the weight on the bar. It might make you feel good. If you go for a, a bit of a PR and you get it, it might make you feel good. You just might not be able to do that for all four sets or for all three sets. So with training, in gym training, the idea is if you're having one of those low energy moments, go in. Just go in. Remember, consistency is everything. Go in, but when it comes to training, the important thing is intensity. Keep the weight on the bar high, work hard, just reduce the overall sets that should allow you to feel better it'll, it'll act as a natural deload right without really calling it a deload it'll be a kind of a deload and when it comes to cardio get in there do the duration just go through the motions a bit lower the heart rate a little bit just don't go quite as hard and when it comes to diet don't be restricted into this mindset of these are foods that are good these are foods that are bad these are calories that i need to stick to anything deviation from that is a failure it's not you are a grown <laughs> grown ass human being, you are allowed to go off plan your diet. Yeah, it's going to affect your results, but if you really need it, then decide to go off plan, no restrictions for one meal and get back on plan the next meal. That's going to give you a lot more longevity than this nice theoretical idea of always being on. When the reality is all of those guys, they just spend months and months away from the gym, months away from cardio, and they just get in worse and worse shape. You have to account for the human side of things. That is the athlete mindset. That is how you continue to stay consistent because inconsistency in terms of taking months away from the gym, months away from cardio, weekends away from the diet, that is what causes poor results really in the end of it. Consistency is super important. So these are methods which allow you to stay more consistent. So real, real basic, but I feel like it needs to be said. We're in, we live in a world where there's so much of a kind of a whole high dopamine, hardcore kind of sentiment, but it's not realistic. And really, most of the time, it just ends up contributing to people falling off the bandwagon. I've seen it so many times. You've got the hardcore trainer who's always shouting at his clients to do better, do more. They fall off the bandwagon. Three months later, they get back up. They sign with him again. 
and he does the same thing again. It just cycles back round, and nobody learns anything. But that's because it's all an amateur mindset. That's not the professional mindset. You have to be able to ride the highs and lows of energy, whether that comes with diet or training or cardio. All right, folks, let me know your experience of this. Have you been a victim of the <laughs> all or nothing mentality? And has it ended in nothing more often than not? Let me know. I'm interested. That's certainly my experience. And that is how I handle my clients as well, which allows for more consistent results over time and ultimately better results. I'll call it there. I'll speak to you guys in the next one. Peace out.